You know, you can always shop my Etsy store, etsy.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. Hey guys, it's Paint with Josh, and we came back today and just blasted this one out on an 18 by 24 inch canvas. You've been asking, and I've been telling you I'm going to do one, so here we did. We did this one again. This is a recreation of the uh, 7th and Carson painting that we did live that was donated and purchased and ra helped raise money, and it was a, a fantastic time. So I told you guys I'd give you a tutorial, and this is it. So get ready. Get your canvas nice and wet. Throw your liquid clear on, and then throw your blue and green in whatever sections you want blue and green in, and then we're gonna paint mainly with white paint and watch all these colors appear, right? So I'll show you that in the beginning of the video, uh, and we're gonna get started. We might as well and stop blabbering on. We're gonna do it, we're gonna do it just like this. Hey guys, today we're back with uh, Thalo Green, Thalo Blue, Alizarin Crimson, uh, Midnight Black, Titanium White, and then we may use a few other colors. But majoritively, we're gonna paint with white paint. I've already covered the canvas in Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, Right, thalo blue again, thalo green, thalo blue. All over, you can probably see it. I can't see a thing because of all the glare, but that's fine. Josh works in, you know, silence, in, in blindness. He can't even see a thing. So let's do something here. We're gonna take a fan brush with just mainly white paint. That's really all we need. A Little bit of white. And we're gonna come up here and make a little circle and you can see immediately how it just starts to go blue. Immediately, right? It doesn't even have to be a, a nice even circle. We're gonna take our one inch brush, nice dry one inch brush, make sure it's dry. Don't wanna to have too much paint then when you come up here with all this liquid clear, right? We're just gonna take and do our circles, that's all. Blend it out, a couple little circles here and there, there and here, here and there, and then we have a nice little beautiful little bit of spot that we can stick a moon into, right? So we know how to do our moons. We've done it a fair amount of times. Take white paint on our filbert brush, and we're gonna go up here, and twist the brush. I'll try to stay out of your way while I do it. Twist the brush around, push the bristles flat, twist it out, right? Make that little circle shape. Looks perfect. Looks amazing. Now we can even take a little bit of that blue or the white and we're gonna put it down here as well and make a little reflection down here, right? Doesn't have to be a perfect, you know, mirror reflection and you want it a lot lower than you think. So make it down here at the bottom of the canvas and we can put our moon almost down here at the bottom. Take a little bit more white, really come down here towards the bottom because you're gonna want the room for everything else, okay? You're gonna want space. There we go. Now we have our little moon down there right underneath. Is it underneath? It looks pretty much underneath. How about that, guys? Take your uh, two inch brush or your one inch brush, just swipe it over. That's all we really need to do with that moon. We're gonna clear all the blue off of this little fan brush here. Really make it dry, dab it on our paper towel, right? Gotta dab it, dab it on the paper towel. Come back in a little bit more white, just literally straight up white. Okay, then we're gonna come in and make our first cloud. And just be really messy, like we're writing in cursive, just that new language that all the all the young kids don't know about, cursive, right? Drop in, leave a little bit, leave a little bit of extraness, a little bit of extra. Gotta have some dark room on the inside, right? And we're gonna take this and push hard enough to make it nice and soft, right? You don't wanna cover a whole lot of the dark. When we paint dark canvases, we try not to paint, right? Try not to cover the whole thing. We don't need to cover it all. We want something to be dark. You have to have some dark shadows, some really light areas, and then we'll get this kind of light that bounces off. If you really want to have some bright areas of your clouds, you can go back in, say there's like a little brighter area right here, maybe a little bit on the edge, make this kind of a messy shape. Maybe there's some in here. You don't want to go too crazy though, right? Don't want to go too nuts. And then we'll come in here and again, hit it with our little circles and it will brighten it up just because it has that bit of light in there, right? So we get this little play of light into our, into our cloud. Now we're gonna come back in, we're gonna grab some more of that white paint, right? Just mainly white, that's why I love these. This is what you do when you're painting in front of your friends and family and you don't show them that you cover it in blue and green and then just come at it with the white and watch everything kind of light up. Look at our little cursive cloud here. You can see how we came up into the cloud a little bit. That's purposeful. We're doing that on purpose, guys. 
right? And really mush the rest of it in there. This one is going to be a lot darker than the other one, which is fine. Right? It's going to be underneath, kind of hidden in the shadows. Look at that thing just come to life, guys. Look at this. Isn't that just lovely? It's such a cool technique, and it's really easy, and it's just fantastic. Look at that. Just they kind of explode right off of the canvas, right into us. And you can see where we come into the thalo green. The, the clouds kind of became the thalo green. All right, let's take our big two inch brush. We're gonna swipe them up all the way to the top. If you've done your job and push hard enough and blended it enough, you won't really have too much to move around, which is a good thing, right? And we came about halfway down to our canvas. We're gonna cover a lot of this one with some trees. So don't worry about that. If you think you came down too far, that's okay. And you can see we're not really reflecting the clouds into the water. And that's for a reason. We're gonna have a lot of foreground that's gonna reflect into the water here, so. Let's make up a bit of trees, All right? When we get a bit of blue, a bit of crimson, a bit of black, and a bit of that phthalo green, and we'll just mix it all up into this nasty, real dark color. It's nasty, gross, dark color. And all we need it for is just the, the shadows of our, of our clouds, the base, right? What, the, what we're going to highlight. This is the base coat, right? So we take that same dirty filbert br the fan brush that we made all of our clouds with, and go right into that dark paint, getting it nice and full on both sides. Whoop. I think I may or may not have flicked a bit. Oh, I did. So you've got a bit of the skin of the paint. Gotta, gotta keep painting. Keep painting, otherwise your, uh, your trees and stuff, your paint will, will get skin on it. Here we go. Let's come up here. And up into the clouds, right? In different heights, all kind of craziness, but we're not gonna go past the middle of the canvas, right? We don't need too many trees. They're just gonna sit back here and kind of be behind our cabin. A little bit of forest back there, right? And just kind of bouncing them in. That's really all we're doing is just bouncing it in, really it. Nothing much to it. Now we're gonna get another bit of, a uh, little bit of crimson, a little bit of blue, mix those together right here on the brush, right? New little little fil uh, fan brush. I keep wanting to call it a filbert brush. Then we're gonna come in here and you can see as we pick up this white, what this little purpley shade is gonna look like. You see that? Oh, oh, it's beautiful, right? We don't want it to be too bright. So we're gonna come back up here and we're gonna hit the tip tops of these trees. Look at this sucker just light up. Look at it, it is gorgeous. We're not trying to cover all of the dark, right? We want to leave some of those trees out there. A couple little, maybe they kind of just kind of fade out over here. And we're doing this for a reason. You're going to watch and see, right? Now we can take our, our little one inch brush and kind of pull the bottom of our trees out at this downward angle like this, right? Coming down towards the little pond that lives down here. And just from those little bits of randomness we were able to drop on there, we can kind of get an idea of what our land sort of looks like, right? Much brighter trees out here, much darker, shadowier trees over there. And this could be a bit of cloud or anything, right? We can mix it up. We can get a little bit of a little bit of that lighter color. Not too much though. You really want to be careful, right? You can go and wipe it off of your brush so it doesn't get to be too crazy. And we're going to come out here towards the side, but we're not going to go all the way to the edge. Don't want to do that. We just want it to be nice and foggy right through here to where we don't really know what's happening. Are we above the clouds? Are these trees poking up from above the clouds? Which would be a really cool perspective if we were up above this fog bank. Be really neat. I'm just trying to get all the light color I can off of this brush very slowly, right? The more and more we push, the more light of that light color goes away. And it goes onto our canvas and gives us somewhere to work with, right? If I dropped a whole bunch of white on here right away, it would be very bright and be very hard to work with. So little, little, little amounts of paint until you get it to look how, it, how you want it to look. Okay, we're gonna come back with that same dirty old fan brush. You're gonna get that dark color again. All right, just load it up onto that brush, really thick. You want it to be really goopy and nasty, right? Holds all those bristles together. And then we're gonna come over here, we're gonna line up maybe up here. 
And then we're going to drop down this straight little tree trunk right to the bottom of our little foggy area right here, right? Turn our brush to the side. You don't want to come at it straight like this. You'll have really long bristles right at the top. So come at it to the side and just push up and kind of bounce into the canvas. You don't even have to connect it all the way, right? You can bring it down, make them as thick as you want or as thin as you want. Kind of spread them out. Make it look however you want it to look, right? Really fantastic. I love it. But he looks lonely out there, so let's give him one more little guy. Look at all that skin, guys. That's what happens when I go on vacation and I don't clean my palette before I go. I get a bunch of skin all over this stuff. But that's okay, it makes it more textured, right? Get these textured paintings. All right, let's do that. Why don't we do another small one? Just a little guy, a little skinny little guy over here, right next to him. Same thing, turning our brush to the side, not going at it, straight at it, right? We're turning it to the side, little taps. They don't even have to touch. You don't even have to connect them, right? You can show little bits of bark in between a little. That's why we made that line, right? Helps you go down in a straight line and, uh, and gives you that bit of bark you can play with. So you don't have to, you know, do everything all the same. It doesn't all have to be filled out like a, like a big fat Christmas tree, right? <clears throat> right? Every time I say right now, I hear Dean in my head. Okay, a little bit of blue with our liquid white. We're going to run that right through there. And get a little bit more liquid white right into our blue so it's nice and runny. And then we're just going to come at it with the very smallest corner again, right? Let's mark our, mark the tip top of our uh, trunk. And then with the very smallest corner, we're going to come and tap at it again, okay? Leaving these little blue highlight areas where, this, where the moonlight is hitting, right? You don't want to cover it all. You don't have to cover it all. You really want to leave a whole lot of shadows in there in order for it to look realistic, right? So don't cover it all. And here, we're not even covering a whole lot of it because we're going to come back in with another little bit of highlight, right? If you wanted to add, you know, a Christmas tree, a Christmas lights to your tree, right? A couple little dangly Christmas lights. You don't want to fill up your whole area full of highlights and then try to add Christmas lights on top of it. It's just a mess, right? Again, you don't even need to fill it in all the way down. Your brain will make up what, it, what goes right here if it's not lit, right? Really super easy. We're going to tap with our knife, come up here, and just right along the edge of our trunk, just along the side. Going to make little, a couple little highlights along the side. Okay, but then you have to go back in and go over it very lightly again, wherever you touched, where you want a little bit of a branch to show through, right? That's all you really have to do. Very lightly touch it. Not all of it has to be lit. You got to remember that. Now let's put a little bit of that highlight color down here, just for our snow, just the littlest bit though. You don't want to do too much, right? Because when we pull it out very gently, now firm, Right, we're trying to pull out this little bit of, of land back here. Pulling out, and again, this is why you drop your moon down so far. If we would have put our moon further up here, it would have got lost in the reflections, right? You want to put it down further than you think. Let's get a little bit of that blue color, put it along this side, and we'll just kind of pull this way. This thing lives up on a hill over here, right? All depends on how you pull your brush is what your land looks like. If you want it to look, you know, like a whole bunch of fog, you can take and do your circles and fog it all up and make it to where you can't really see what's going on. You can connect these over here just by making the right angles, right? And bring it down further. You can bring this side down over here a little bit. The more and harder and harder we push, the more brightness it's gonna take out of there. Remember, we're using such little amount of paint. We don't have a whole lot of paint in here. You don't need a whole lot, right? It's already been proven we don't need a lot. All right, now we can take our, our fan brush or your filbert brush or whatever you're more comfortable with. I just want to leave a dark line. All right, we're going to come in. We're going to bounce it back and forth until we can go straight again. And this is going to end up being our, our bit of land, our barrier between land and sea, right? Or land and water. So it's got to be pretty straight. Pretty straight. And that'll give us an idea when we go to do our reflections and everything, where to put them, right? 
And as long as you have a disconnect of that dark in between any of this light, it'll show your land and your water. We won't have to put any water lines in or anything. All right, let's do these trees. We're gonna do them upside down. All right, so instead of coming at it like this and pushing upwards, now we're gonna come at it and, and push them downwards, right? And we're not gonna see the whole thing, so don't start at the bottom. We're only gonna see maybe the littlest bit of this guy as he gets thin, right? And maybe here we'll see a bit more, and this guy might go out of frame on our, on our canvas. He's gonna go down so far we can't even see him. But this one, we just wanna see that little thin tip. Now we're gonna go back and very little amount of paint. Very little amount, okay? We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna highlight him going downwards. And then as we get closer, we're gonna tilt the brush onto a, a vertical. So instead of being flat and going down as we get towards the edge, we tilt it like that. Just the smallest, littlest amount of paint though. Seriously. Don't need a whole lot because we're gonna take it and we're gonna mess it right up, right? Pull it straight down, straight down, over to the side. As many times as you want until it looks how you want it to look, right? Now, this is when you were to add lights. You could add your lights in there and then do the same thing. One swipe down, one swipe over. And uh, you get these really cool reflections. But as long as you leave a bit of dark in between that light color and your reflections, you get this bit of implied water. We're in the water, they're on the land. Nice and simple, right? Right? All right, let's take some of that dirty, nasty, skin chunky. Look at this, oh, it's foul. Foul. All right, mix up some of that. Let's get a little bit more of the dark. Get rid of more skin, this is gross. Probably cut this out of the video. A little bit of blue, a little bit of crimson into our dark pile, right? And then we'll make our cabin out of this kind of purpley-ish, really dark color. So. And this is just, again, just the shadow, the base that we're gonna highlight, right? Gotta have a dark shadow in order to highlight it with white. Okay, now if our cabin's gonna be over here, we're gonna decide and cut out, you know, the paint behind it, right? So we're gonna scrape out what we think our cabin is gonna look like. So we'll do two on the left, two on the right. Let's do three on the left, there we go. Bam, bam, bam. And you're literally scraping away all this big, thick paint from those trees because we don't want to add that thick paint on top of more thick paint. See what I mean? Now we're going to come over here. We're going to scrape out two sections for our side wall. Bring our roof over there and then connect it down over here. So we need a little bit of there. Scrape out all the roof. And now we got this wicked big cabin right here that we can, uh, that we can highlight. So let's take some of that dark. Just smush it down on just so there's something for the other paint to grab right if we need some of this thick paint we're going to want it to grist to grab onto the lighter color paint that we're about to put on there okay a little bit darker over here so we do a little bit more of this dark mixture we can even add some of the uh crimson into this side it'll look really cool when we get done okay now in order to make that color that we had you know, we've been boasting about, oh, we'll make this cabin and we're going to do this tutorial and it's coming and it's coming and it's coming. We're going to take a little bit of the purple or bluish color, a little bit of our crimson, a little bit of our green, and we're going to find a spot to mix them up. And it's going to go to this weird kind of darkish, reddish, the more crimson you have, obviously, darkish, reddish, kind of pinkish uh, wood color. Remember, your wood doesn't always have to be brown, right? We don't even have brown on our palette. So we're gonna mix it into this kind of pinkish brownish color. Scrape it up, come over here, right to the peak of our, of our roof, and we're gonna pull down, just straight down, right? Kind of mushing it on medium pressure, right? Not trying to get it to break, really, but we're not trying to smush it so hard that it doesn't work either, right? This is the best part about when you not over mix this paint, you get these cool differences in our, in our wood grain. Let's see, a little bit more. We never make enough, so always gotta go back. And that again will help you with, uh, with your differences in color, guys. If you don't make enough paint the first time and you have to go back and make up another batch, you'll get this 
you know, difference in color. And how about that? Looks fantastic. All right, let's take a little bit of the white and we're gonna mix it with a little bit, let's say the blue, right? That's what's underneath. We get a little bit of white, a little bit of bluish. Not too blue, not too white though, right? Kind of in between. Take this, scrape in our bluey, snowy roof. Over here, bam, 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 bam. Maybe we'll get a bit of it over the edge. Just like that. And then we gotta come in and fix our angle here. There we go. Boom. Bingo, bango, right? Just again, play with it until you like the way that it looks. So that, I mean, that means the color, that means your angles, that means, you know, everything. Everything, man. My knife always tends to run out right at the edge over here. Always at the, at the edge. There we go. Nice and bright. Right? You can always adjust the level of your roof too by raising it up a little bit. But remember, you got to make it perspectively correct. So don't play around too much. Now we got to come over here and make it a little bit thicker. There we go. That's better. Now we'll come in, mix all that up. We're gonna cover this with a whole big tree anyway, so it doesn't really much matter. Now let's add our door by scraping it out, right? Just about the size of your of your small palette knife. It's a good size door for this size building. Okay, we'll come in, we'll get our little bit of white and blue, line the edges of our door, just so we get that little difference in color, right? A little bit of the, the uh, liquid white in there too, help it stick a little bit better. Right, well watch this. See, it doesn't want to stick. Go back, get your liquid white. Come in and let's knock this out. There we go, a little bit of door. Right across the top. And drop some down this side. Really messy, right? It doesn't have to look perfect. It's supposed to be this old abandoned building. So it doesn't need to look very perfect. You can even scrape out a nice window. But something creepy is back there looking at us, right? Really scraping it out. You want to take off all that paint. It's nice and dark back there. Get a little bit of that white, maybe we'll line it on the edge just with a little bit of white paint. And it looks like there'll be a little windowsill back there, right? Again, you don't want it to be perfect. Don't make this perfect thing. You don't need it to be perfect at all. Maybe a little bit falls off the, falls off the side. Just, just so, right? Just barely. Just enough. There we go. And again, you can just play with it until you like the way that it looks. If you add dark to these, you'll get this real dark color where you'll get a, it'll look like a hole in the wood. All right, so if we took a little bit of this, drop some dark underneath it, you get these holes, little chunks in the wood that it makes it look really abandoned when you have a couple of these suckers in there. Really, they've been gone for a long time, these guys. Real long time. All right, let's scrape this out. Scrape it out over here, show you what happens. Now we're gonna take our, our one inch brush or two inch brush, whatever you want. And we're gonna start at the top corner, working our way down and then back up in this V shape, okay? We're pulling it out that way, pull it out this way. Now we're gonna come over here, we're gonna start pulling it up. And that way we get this three-dimensional building. We have our dark side, we have our light side. It's almost too dark over here. There we go. All right, want it to get darker towards the back. We really don't care what's back there. And again, your mind will sort of make up what it looks like back there. Let's see. There we go. Sometimes it looks neat if you can sneak a little dark line in underneath your roof. This helps it pop a little bit more. You know what I mean? Looks like it's kind of sitting out there, kind of hanging on for dear life. This old shaggy, saggy building, right? Okay, now, <clears throat> we can come in, grab the littlest bit of that white. I'm telling you, start small. Because once it's on there, you can't make it go away. So start with just the littlest touch of paint, like two little dabs, see what it does. See, that's even too bright. So I'm gonna turn my brush over. We're gonna work it in this other direction. I don't wanna have too much light over back here behind our cabin because I don't think the moon's gonna reach that far. 
That bit of skin out of there. You're gross, Josh. Disgusting. There we go. All right, now we can take a little cabin, all right? Our cabin's gotta have a little fence. So I like making fences by just taking a little bit and we're gonna come down our little hill just like this, okay? Now we're gonna come back. We don't want them to be so crazily different in height because that'll mess you up on your bars, your little side beams, right? There we go. All we're doing is just kind of pulling down in the direction that we really want them to go. You can sort of see there. And then when we go to highlight them, you'll really be able to tell. All right, get a little bit of liquid white, a little bit of that lighter color, and then it'll just, it's just the littlest touch that you need when you have that liquid white on there because it wants to, wants to come off and it wants to stick to that big thick paint. So you don't need a whole lot. And it doesn't all need to look the same. It can look just like this, nice and messy, right? Some of it's highlight, some of it's in the shadow. We don't know what's happening. Very cool. Now we can take it, we can pull the legs out. If you pull them towards your cabin, you'll get these cool little shadows. We can make it work on this guy. There we go. And then you can shape those shadows in a certain direction, right? Depending on what you want it to look like or what it looks like in your mind. And I don't want them too noticeable, so I'm gonna kind of push them out that way. But we can still see there's a small little bit of, uh, of that little shadowing down in there. Which I think looks really cool. All right, let's take a little bit of snow. Maybe we can see what our snow is gonna look like around this guy. Just kind of mushing it on with our palette knife. And then that way we don't get too much too quickly, right? Pull it down this way. It's like a little bit of snow drifting across the guy's path. And you're like, what path, Josh? And I'm like, this path, I got your path right here. Coming out of the guy's door. I mean, it gets bigger as it comes down. It goes off this way. There we go, nice and small up there. Bigger as we get down here. Bam, 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 just like that. Again, we can go over it very slightly and just kind of soften it just a little, right? Just soften it, step back, see what it looks like. Oh, that looks really cool actually. If, watch this, we're, we're gonna drag this dark over, right? Drag the dark over and that way we can come back in with a path. It's gonna like look like it's going right, like floating right over the, like this empty bit down here, see what I mean? Very lightly swipe. Man, and we, as long as we get those differences in color, oh, look at this. And the more you go, the more it's gonna change, the softer it'll become until you like the way that it looks. That's all that you have to do is like it, right? We can even sit back here, we can put a little bit of like this grassy bush back here. Never know what's back here. That's the wrong brush though, we need this brush, nice thick brush. Right, and there's another one over here. Kind of growing next to the sides of those little bits of fence. And then we can pull them out in certain directions, whichever way you want. Oh, guys, look at this. Now we're gonna come back in that liquid white. And how do we do this? Just like that. Again, trying not to cover everything, right? We don't wanna cover all the shadows that we put down, just a little bit of light, just to show you there's something there, right? There's something there growing at the edge of this little bit of land here. Maybe it's a little bit of grass or some frozen something or other, right? But again, when we're doing the highlights, we don't wanna cover it all. Gotta save some of it. And then just play, see what it looks like when you, when you move it around. Right? Maybe there's a bit over here, maybe you didn't like this section, but it looks cool as we drag it away to something over here, right? Now we're gonna get that last little bit of paint, drag it down through our fan brush like this, and now we have to cover the house, okay? You have to cover some of it, you have to. Let's make this one nice and tall. We're gonna cover right over the end of the house. Bam, just like that, right? We can do that, we'll draw, we'll make this guy a, a little skinny evergreen tree, like his other friends over here. Right, and to do that, we need a lot of paint. So go back, get more paint. You can mix your blue and black together or just straight black if you wanted to. As long as it's nice and thick and chunky, right? Now, as we go over all this stuff, you wanna get a little bit of paint thinner. Go down through there, make it much thinner on your brush. 
And that way, as we come down, it will glide right over all that thick paint and leave us a nice dark shadow that we could still play with just like that. <clears throat> Take the bottom, we're gonna pull the bottom out. Bing, bang, boom. Maybe we can put another couple little bushes down underneath because you never know. They're probably there. They're there in my mind. There we go. A little bit of that, nice and easy. It's all you really gotta do. Kind of take some of that white, pull it out a little. You can go back in, highlight it a bit more if we didn't get enough. And just play with it until you like the way that it looks. It's only the you that has to like it. Okay, now we're gonna come back, get our smaller micro fan brush, right? I tell you guys about these all the time. Micro fan brush, you have to get these ones if you want to have trees like me. Okay, we're gonna come up here, got our little thing here, maybe there's a little bit of side trunk along the edge we can see. Now we're gonna come at it with our, just the corner, just the corner, right? And then the more we get down, the more we wanna cover, the more bristles that we touch against the tree. The more we allow to grab onto the thick paint that's there, and as we come down, you get kind of darker and darker until you really don't need, you know, too many highlights anymore. And the more and more you touch, the more you're gonna mush it. So be careful, All right? This is a much bigger, thicker kind of guy over here. You can take some of that blue and just really blend it out, right? Pushing hard with this one inch brush, kind of shaping it. We're maintaining that dark that's underneath and then we'll come back over here and just get our little bit of our reflection on our tree. Again, touching very lightly, upside down now to make the shape. Swiping once, going over. That's all you really need. Very simple, very easy little thing to do. You can get a couple of these guys to get reflection. Just a little. And that's even too much because they grew on me. There we go. Just a little bit. Again, maintaining that line of dark in there. That's what you want. You want to have that darkness. There we go. I don't know what that was right there. But well, we're going to pull it straight to the side. All right, let's do one more thing because it's, it's full, but it's not as full as Josh likes. So let's do a little bit more. All right, get that bit of blue and crimson and, and dark color. Make our little mixture again. Get rid of our skin, gross, nasty paint, all dried up because we went on vacation and we're too lazy to clean our palettes. Okay, we're gonna get the same old fan brush that we've been using to make the shape. All right, drag it down on both sides. And let's do one more tree in here, just because I like it. Here we go, just very lightly. And then the more and more we come down, the more and more we push till poof, this tree sits in front of that other tree. And we're gonna pull it out just like that, right? Bam, just like that, guys. Super, super simple. And while we have this fan brush out, let's make another guy over here. Not so much of an angle on this guy, though. a little bit more straight up. A little bit more straight up, down in front of that guy. Poof, you gotta cover some of your favorite parts of your painting. So if that tree was one of your favorite parts, I'm sorry, but you gotta cover over it. Every so often, you gotta cover it, man. This one needs to come down a bit more, actually. Poof. There we go. I want it down close to the water down here. There we are. All right, let's take our uh, little our micro liner brush. We'll go back into that dark color. And then we're going to try to snag a little bit of the white and sort of create this little grayish mixture, right? It's a little bit lighter color than the actual dark that's there. And let's come up here and we'll make our little bits of branches go off into the distance, right? They're a little bit lighter colored. This one's got a little bit of light on one side, a little bit of dark on one side, just from how it loaded itself onto the brush, right? A little jiggle, almost like an upside down lightning bolt, right? And they don't have to be huge, they really don't. But the more you go down on your trunk, the bigger and thicker they should be, right? Why don't we take this guy and see if we can't make just the side of our trunk highlight with this kind of lighter colored grayish paint, just the littlest bit. And see if that's enough. We, we want to paint a nice dark scene, but we don't want to have too many highlights, but we want to have enough. Let's see, let's go up the top and then we'll come down, branch off, branch, 
Bran he said branch off. Yeah, I said branch. There we go. Because we're making branches. Right? A little bit. Maybe drag it down the other way. You don't all have to go up. And as we go through all this thick bit of tree and and uh, the bit of roof where it's real thick over here, you got to use a lot of paint thinner on your brush to get it to, you know, deposit the paint and not drag that light color everywhere. Right? You want to be brave. You load it up and go down in front of your cabin. That's proven to me that you're brave. If you can go across the roof and down in front, then you are a brave soul. Let's do, let's chuck one guy, one little branch off of here, just like so. It's almost like they're not high lit enough though. A little bit of white, right where we think the branches might be, you know, lit up by the night sky. This guy needs to be a whole lot fatter as he comes down. There we go. Now, they don't all have to be white branches. You can make all different sorts of, you know, purpley-ish. Uh, you can get that little bit of um, the thalo green in there. You get all sorts of stuff. And you make them however you want them to look, right? Just like so. You don't have to highlight the whole thing either. Don't even worry about it. All right, this guy needed a little bit of... Just so you can see him out there. All right, now that highlight job didn't really work for me. So we're going to take a little bit of this kind of purplish, whitish mixture and just grab around the side, just very lightly kind of tug to the side. Don't need a whole lot. You want to make sure you have enough on your brush that it keeps depositing it. Or not your brush, your palette knife that it keeps depositing it almost all the way to the top, right? That's what you want to see. And you only want to go about halfway. Don't need to do the whole tree, right? This guy's a little bit bigger. So we're going to pull a little bit. Again, you need that kind of lighter colored paint. You want it to pop against this, all this dark. Got to have some light in there if you want it to pop. And just literally touching with the knife and pulling to the side the smallest, teensiest, tiniest little bit really all you need. You can even throw, let's chuck a little bit of brighter, a little bit of brighter path in there. And you can always go back and fix it later, but just very lightly for me, that's how I like to do it. A little bit of in between, you know, palette knife and, and brush. That's Josh's favorite. Okay, why don't we throw a little bit of that blue over here. Just enough so that when we, we can grab just the very bottom of it, right? Just the teeniest little bit. Just the bit. This side would be dark, though. We wouldn't really see the all that blue around the other side of the tree, right? Got to keep that in mind. Keep your shadows in mind. Keep everything in mind. Looks really good. Really like how this one came out. Except we didn't reflect these suckers yet, huh? So push real hard. Pull it off. Just like that, right in there. Swipe, swipe over to the side. Now we gotta highlight that guy just the smallest, teensiest little bit on this side, right? Because again, when we pull it with that brush, it's gonna move on its own. So we don't even need to really do a lot. Just put the paint there. And then as we move over, see how it's gonna pull it? And that'll look like the bark of our tree in the water, just like that. So, well, I told you I was gonna give you one, and I did. A nice, cute little tutorial for one of my favorite paintings, and uh, turned out fantastic, I really like it. But just because I don't like them to all be the same, let's put like a little chemtrail in this one. Almost like it came out of the moon, just right? Straight as you can be, you don't even have to blend it a whole lot. Everyone knows what it is. The more and more you push, there we go. And cooler and cooler and softer and softer it will become, right? You get this cool little chemtrail off in the, off in the night sky. And it doesn't even have to be straight. It really doesn't. I've seen, I was watching them today. I was driving back to town and, uh, they start at this weird angle and then they'll turn a little bit and then they'll go back up. 
So they don't have to be straight. Don't worry about that. There we go. A little bit of softness up there. Looks really cool. I like this, how it came out over here. Just making it soft around the moon. Looks really neat, guys. Really neat. Now it's time to add some stars. Okay, we're going to grab a load of liquid white on the end of our smallest little micro liner brush that we can get, right? And we're just going to touch very softly in different places. You don't want them to be too close. And if they're inside of a cloud, you want them to be very small, like they're like the cloud is blocking some of the light from coming through, right? So not as big as the other ones. There we go, bing, bang, boom. You don't want them to be in straight lines, really. You want it to be sort of random. Randomness, unless you're trying to paint like a, you know, a known constellation. And you can have this random bit of stars in there. If you want to do a shooting star, you take one, drop a little bit of, of uh, color onto it, pick your direction carefully, and one swipe, that's all you get. Start away from it, one swipe, and you get this cool little shooting star. It looks like it's going to come down and land on us, right? Kind of mix away that last little bit that we're right where we first touched. All right. Bing, bang, boom. Nice and simple, guys. So yours, you can put as many stars as you want or as few stars as you want. And then you can kind of reflect them down, but make sure they're really low. Remember, this is a low perspective. So we're not going to see a lot of stars. We're only going to see the very, very, very tip tops of a few. Not too many. Over here is a different story. We can put these in like this. You got the one over here, the one over there, a couple of these in here, maybe this guy, <clears throat> but not too many and very, very, very light touch. Okay. Very light touch of the paint. You don't want to have a whole lot of paint because it wants to move a lot. Okay. So very light touch with our, our brush, just so, so lightly, just barely dragging in the smallest bit, right? And then pulling to the side, very lightly. Again, why don't we go with this one? We'll go up, 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 very lightly, come to the side. So, so light, because you don't want them to look too long or, you know, different. Just because they're in the water doesn't mean that they're completely different, right? There we go. Just like that, we gotta finish painting, guys. Oh, where are the birds at, Josh, though? Where are the birds? Oh, the birds, the birds. Ah, the birds, right? No one knows what I'm talking about. So for part of my signature, I take uh, and I paint three birds. It's myself, my wife, and my daughter. And it's really the only way that we all get to travel at the same time is if I put us in these paintings. So why don't I put us back here and you can put yours however, you know, wherever you want. Or if you have five people in your family or more, you know, you can do whatever. Or you can just paint three or two or one or however many you want or zero. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. All right. Well, I want to thank you for, uh, you know, enjoying this, painting this one with me. I hope you guys enjoyed this scene. It was a very easy scene on an 18 by 24 inch black canvas. Very easy to do. And that uh, turned out really, really good. I don't really see anything that I'm going to fix when you guys aren't watching, right? Uh, but besides that, you know, that's pretty much it, really. We could do our uh, our one little shooting star in the other direction over here, which we're sort of missing, I guess. If he was up here, in between these guys, over there, why don't we put him there? It doesn't even matter. Who's looking, really? He's too far in anyway. That's what we'll say, he's too far in. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please share the videos when you do your painting. I really, I love to see them. So please share it. Uh, I want to see what yours looks like. I don't care if you don't like it. I want to see it. So let's see if I was able to convey, you know, what I do in my own mind to you guys, right? That's the goal. So uh, besides that, share the videos, 
shop my Etsy store. It's the holiday season. We have uh, tons of deals, usually 20 to 30% off canvas paintings. I have hats, brand new Paint with Josh hats, new shirts, new bags, new backpacks, all new crazy stuff, new pillows, all sorts of stuff that we have in the Etsy shop. So support me. The more you guys support me, the more I can buy more canvases and then keep bringing you more videos, right? So until then, we'll uh, say goodbye. And uh, I hope you guys have the rest of a good day and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.